Hi, my dear friends, some words of Torah for Parshat Berukotai. In the wake of another horrific mass shooting of children, this time in Uvalde, Texas, we are left bewildered and crestfallen about the condition of our society. Violence is on the rise and the society's civility and its very fabric are deteriorating only further. As a people, we are seemingly becoming more discordant from the rest of the world. How does the Jew, with his Torah, his faith, and his chosenness, find a place within such a world? How do our people claim a role in a society that has only scorn for religion and does not appreciate the morality and gift of the Jews? Firstly, it's important to note that it wasn't always this way. In our early history, the original generation of the Jewish people who left Egypt did not see anything different or remarkable about themselves at all. They could not envision their own specialness. And it took a lot of convincing from Hashem himself to make the Jewish people see their greatness and the gifts that they could bring to the world. Our Parsha opens with Hashem promising the Jews that in exchange for following Hashem's laws, Im bechu kotai telechu, we stand to receive tremendous gifts of bounty and blessing in the promised land, rainfall, harvest, peace, power, and most importantly, vihitalachti betochachem, I, Hashem, will dwell in your midst and will be your God. The paragraph finishes by saying, Ani Hashem elokechem, I'm the Lord your God, asher hotzeiti etchem me'eretz mitzrayim mihiyot lahem avadim. I have taken you out of Egypt and from being their slaves. Vo eshbor motot ulechem, I have broken the bars on your yoke. And I have led you to stand tall. Why does Hashem emphasize at this point that he redeemed us from Egyptian slavery? What is the significance of the imagery of our being like a beast of burden whose yoke was broken upon its emancipation? The Nitziv offers an important insight. Hashem understood that the greatest human achievement is the limit placed upon the individual by their own mind. This is true of both individuals and societies. Until 1954, it was widely considered to be impossible for any human being to run a mile in less than four minutes. That is, until Roger Bannister broke through the four-minute mile and broke not only a physical barrier, but a psychological one as well. We do this to ourselves whenever we feel incapable of certain successes. When I view myself as unworthy or as a failure, then I can never succeed. The only way for me to realize success is by feeling that I am worthy of success. I have to believe in myself first and foremost in order to make my dreams of success come to fruition. B'nai Israel, after having been enslaved for centuries, still maintained the slave mentality and had trouble envisioning themselves as a nation of true blessing and prosperity. Hashem wished to assure them that they were indeed worthy of all the blessing list, blessings listed at the beginning of our Parsha. The only thing hindering us was our own self-image, and so Hashem disabused us of that low self-image. When an ox has been subjugated for its entire life so that all it knows is the feeling of the yoke around its neck and the strain of the plow's weight, it's not enough to simply remove the yoke from the ox's neck The animal still expects to only have a temporary reprieve for a few hours, only to have the yoke placed back on its back the next day. The only way for the ox to feel liberated from its role as a beast of burden is to witness the bars that hold the yoke together being broken, never to be used again. But even then, the animal still feels that it cannot raise its head in pride because it's still too accustomed to having its head lowered by the heavy yoke. Only after the animal's master actively lifts up the animal's head and walks together with the animal while its head is raised, does the animal start to feel that perhaps I've entered a new chapter of my existence. No longer am I the lowly beast of the field. I finally arrived at my elevated status. This is what Hashem was telling the Jewish people. If you find it hard to believe how you, as a previously lowly slave class, could achieve such blessing and greatness when you enter the land of Israel, realize this. I have not only liberated you from Egyptian slavery, but I have broken the yoke bars by permanently severing Egypt's dominion over you. Moreover, when I gave you the Torah at Mount Sinai, I caused you to stand tall and become a princely people. 
I showed you all that you are capable of doing and becoming. Today, you stand tall and proud. As such, you should have no problem envisioning your future prosperity in Eretz Yisrael as my chosen people. And that is what it means to be a Jew whenever where, and wherever we live. When violence, especially violence against innocent children, is a daily headline, then society has reached a low point, to be sure. When human life is treated with such utter disregard, then humanity has lost its way. Mankind has lost confidence in its own value. Human beings no longer respect the inherent greatness within every person created in God's image. How do we restore that sense of specialness to an entire society? What is the role of the Jewish people? Well, it's certainly no easy task, but if we are to take a cue from the Torah text, the answer lies in re-educating mankind that all people matter, that human beings are special, that we aren't just a collection of cells or a more sophisticated order of organism. Our role as a light unto the nations is to treat every human being with dignity and respect, regardless of their race, color, or creed. Let us use this universal Torah message of man being made in God's image as a defining slogan in our interactions with and influence upon our larger social order. I'll conclude with some divrei chasidut on the words of the verse from our parsha. Vo'eshbor motot ulechem. I have broken the bars of your yoke, says God. The word motot, or bars, in Hebrew, written is written without any vavs. It's just written mem, tet, taf. The holy books tell us that we can read the word as the mem tets, or the 49ers. No, I'm not referring to the San Francisco football team. There are two 49s that we focus on during this time of year, between Pesach and Shavuot. We are in the process of divesting ourselves of the 49 levels of impurity that we had attained while in our long period of servitude in Egypt. We are also in the process of ascending the ladder of 49 levels of holiness during this period of the 49 days of Sfirata Omer. During this process of Sfirata Omer, Hashem is helping us develop and grow in this process of both divestiture of impurity and spiritual ascent. Hashem, as it were, is helping us in this process by breaking the bonds of our 49 levels of impurity. He is also causing us to transcend even the 49th level of holiness so that by the time Shavuot arrives, we will be on an even higher, the 50th rung of holiness, thus breaking, as it were, the 49. This is what is meant by Hashem leading us to stand tall. Va'oleich etchem komimiyut. By the time Shavuot arrives, we will all be able to envision ourselves standing once again at Mount Sinai with our heads proudly raised in the knowledge that Hashem has chosen us as his people to be the receivers and perpetuators of his Torah. Indeed, these are words that we can live by every single day in that life is all about the journey of constant ascent and growth. It is why in our Birkat HaMazon, our Grace After Meals, Right after we pray to God to grant us a bountiful parnasa, an income, we insert the prayer, Harachaman hu yishbor uleinu me'alat tzavarenu, b'hu yolichenu May the merciful one break the yoke from our necks and lead us standing tall to our land. By reciting this immediately after asking God for material wealth, we are in a sense justifying our request to be blessed with a good life. In order for us to realize our destiny as Hashem's people in the promised land, we must first feel a sense of pride and confidence in ourselves, that we are not merely schleppers, but rather a royal nation who carries the mantle. It is only proper for us to have our heads elevated through our both our material well-being and our spiritual well-being before making our way back to the promised land of Eretz Israel. Shavuot, my friends, will soon be upon us. The key to mankind's redemption lies in our sharing this optimistic message of hope and dignity for the human condition. May we be part of that solution to the current malaise. May God wipe away all tears and end all violence. May we help usher in the redemption speedily and on our days. B'meheira b'yameinu amen. And here, dear friends, is wishing you a beautiful Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom, in our journey together.